ho, ho. Green Giant. What's good guys, hope you like that intro. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm more mobile now, I can move around, I can shoot around more. Today I went to PT, um, the boot is coming off soon, I've started to drive, just a little life update for you guys real quick. I just wanna say, sorry about the hiatus. Uh, so first of all, last Friday, I was feeling a little bit under the weather, I don't know if Delta was catching up to me or some shit, I don't, I don't really know, hope, hope not, but um, I went to Disney with my family, last week and now i'm back i just came in last night so i'm ready and there's a lot of shit that happened free agency mlb nba i'm ready to talk about it so with uh the mlb trades first of all you have max scherzer went to the dodgers now i just want to say as a red sox fan i was um i was a little a little bit heated at the fact that heim bloom and the red sox management didn't try to go for him uh more aggressively uh, because, you know, as a Red Sox fan, we're in a good position right now. We we took a little slide last week. We we're losing some games, but we're on a, you know, the Yankees are catching up now. The Rays, you still can't forget about them. As a Red Sox fan, I was like, come on, if we get another pitcher in our lineup or in our rotation, we have a good shot of, you know, being the, the, the alpha team in the AL East, right? And the fact that we didn't get Max Scherzer, I was a little bit heated. But I have to say, I trust Heim Bloom. I trust him because he made a great decision trading Mookie Betts. That turned out to be a great decision. This year, we're having a great year. Um, our players are turning up. The rotation is actually looking very nice. Some games are a little iffy um, when you get deeper into the innings. Some pitchers are doing better than others. But when Sale comes back, I'm very excited for this team. Max Scherzer to the Dodgers. In my opinion, it's kind of like, well, they lost Trevor Bauer, obviously, to, you know, you know that situation. They lost Trevor Bauer. Um, I believe Kershaw is coming back from the injury soon. But you replace Trevor Bauer with Max Scherzer, essentially. The Dodgers are a team to be reckoned with, but you can't forget about the Padres, the Giants. You know, the the NL West and the AL East, th these are the two divisions that are going to be seeing each other in the World Series, in my opinion. And I, told, I said this to all my friends at the beginning of the season. I said the Red Sox are going to be in the World Series, and I'm sticking with it, okay? I want to make a podcast. I want to make a vlog of me going to the Duck Boat Parade in Boston when they win the World Series, and you can hold me to that. But let's keep this video going. I also want to mention something real quick about my Boston Celtics. So <sighs> free agency has been going on, and as a Celtics fan, and uh, you know, as a Boston fan in general, you don't usually get those big splashes in free agency i mean uh or even you know you don't it's not it's not common to get a huge um a huge fish to come to boston unless it's like a a trade that happens you know Kyrie came to boston that was huge um other things like that normally it's not it's not as uh exciting you know, it's not like a, it's not LA, it's not New York, it's not Miami. I wasn't expecting any any real earth-shattering uh, moves to be made in Boston. What I will say though is, I really think that the Kemba Walker uh, the Kemba Walker situation is gonna maybe come back and bite us in the butt. Now listen, the Knicks have gotten the the Knicks. Say what you will about the Knicks, laugh however you want. The Knicks are actually a team to be reckoned with now in the NBA. Last year, very it was very surprising that they made it in the playoffs, in my opinion. I didn't think Julius Randle was, was capable of balling like that. Mitchell Robinson, RJ Barrett, Derrick Rose, players like that. Now you add Kemba Walker to the mix. Solid point guard in the NBA, not exactly a great defensive player, but the Knicks are a team to be reckoned with. With Kemba Walker at point, you got Derrick Rose, you got veterans, you got people young a young core in new york hey man if it comes down to it i think it's going to be a very good series boston versus new york i'm, I'm sure the, the celtics would take care of the knicks but now with kemba julius randall who's actually proven to be a great player in this league mitchell robinson rj barrett it goes on and on and then you, you know you have the the rookies who are coming up and still producing 
Um, I think the the New York Knicks have done a great job in this free agency so far. They're not exactly a, a top tier team in the East, but they are a team that I can see making the playoffs and improving their spot um, in the playoffs for that matter. The next team I want to mention is, uh, so obviously, let's get the elephant out of the room, the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, if you're not on Twitter, if you're not on Instagram, you might not have caught this. You might not have uh, seen this, but from this whole week reading stuff on Twitter and Instagram, it's it's a mixed bag. You get a mixed bag of emotions from people because some people, at, when this thing happened, when Russell Westbrook joined the Lakers, um, when the trade happened, a lot of people were uh, were like, oh, super team, super team, blah, 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 super team. But now, a few days went by and people are saying, no, it's not a super team. It's a bunch of old heads, it's a bunch of you know old guys out of their prime. To that, I say, uh, oh, and then they got mellow. So... Their, their team is basically four guys who are under contract. Now you have people taking the NBA minimum to play for them. My opinion is is pretty simple. When you, you still have LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, say what you will about his shooting, say what you will about um, him being able to work together with teammates, being able to pass the ball, say what you will about Anthony Davis, his his um him being out of shape, him maybe not being the best with keep taking care of his body. And say what you want about Melo. Listen, you still have LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, who, by the way, is in his prime still. Anthony Davis is in his prime. I don't really see the argument that plays into this saying that the Lakers aren't a good team. And saying by saying the Lakers are just a bunch of old players, you know, oh, they can't win, oh, the, it's it kind of sounds dumb, don't you think? Saying that LeBron James and all these players won't be able to play well together and this and that. It just seems stupid to say that. It seems stupid because LeBron James, no matter what, say what you will about him, say what you will about his character, his play, always, oh, always oh, flops, always oh, not this. LeBron James is still a winner, in my opinion. He's still a winner. Russell Westbrook, say what you will, he puts points on the board and he gets rebounds. He plays de- very good defense. Say what you will about his shooting, but to be honest, the Lakers are still a very good team in the West. Now, they, shooting is definitely a problem for that team. Shooting is definitely a problem. You know, all the memes are coming out. Oh, they're going to guard them. They're going to park the bus in the paint and shit like that. Russell Westbrook, Carmelo, and LeBron, maybe AD, they're all hungry for a ring. That's the bottom line. Russell Westbrook is starving for a ring. Okay, LeBron actually, LeBron wants a ring. But if we're going to go tears, uh, I would say, I would say Russell Westbrook is probably ahead of LeBron for wanting a ring because... Well, he doesn't have one yet, right? And to say that the Lakers are an old team and, you know, oh, they're not they're not veterans, they're just old. I think that's wrong. I think obviously, yes, they're they are a well-aged team. But when you have a player like Russell Westbrook, athletic as he is, hungry as he is, plays balls to the wall every single time he's on the court, along with LeBron James, arguably the best player to ever play the bas- to play basketball, you have Anthony Davis, a gifted four at points he can be a five he's a shooter he's a mid-range shooter can sometimes shoot the three not as consistent but honestly he's probably a better shooter than russell westbrook at that point you have russell westbrook who's hungry for a ring i don't doubt that they will be somewhere around the the western conference finals maybe the maybe they don't win it maybe they don't make it to the finals but this is not a team that's going to just roll over at the end of the year now I am a fan of watching LeBron, I'm a fan of watching Westbrook, and I'm not a Lakers fan, but it would not surprise me if next June we see these we see this team in the finals, p- playing whoever. I really don't think that it, uh, you know, people will say, oh, yo, they're too old, oh, they're, oh, they're not going to make it. Listen, if LeBron and Westbrook turn out to be a good duo together and they turn out to complement each other, there's not there's not another duo really stopping them. I guess you could say, well, I guess a better duo, Harden, KD, Kyrie, KD, maybe, because they have better shooting ability. When it comes to the defensive side of the ball, I would take LeBron and Westbrook on the defensive side of the ball, obviously. But I think you have I think we should pump the brakes on saying that this team is too old and not not they're not veterans, they're old. I would pump the brakes on that because you saw LeBron's tweet as, uh, as um, you know, 
as in character as that may as that tweet may be, LeBron of course is going to say that because LeBron is hungry and so is Westbrook and at the end of the day they're looking for a ring and I think that if they actually complement each other well and they don't ball hog and they don't get in each other's faces or step on each other's toes, this is a team that has actually, you know, could possibly win the finals. Not saying they will. I'm saying keep them in your keep them in your periphery because if you if you want to sit back and you want to talk shit and say oh they're not going to win shit they're not going to win anything you're going to be sitting on your hands when LeBron is hoisting up that Larry O'Brien trophy and I'm not even a Lakers fan but I'm just saying I mean it's he's coming to the end of his career he's hungry for a ring he obviously he needs players around him right he's got Westbrook who's hungrier than anyone else in the NBA to get a ring I don't doubt that they will be in the in the running in the contention come June, come late May. And that's what I'm gonna, that's all I'm saying about the Lakers and that situation. Now, let's talk about the Chicago Bulls. Interestingly enough, I think the Chicago Bulls look like a better team on paper than a lot of teams in the NBA. I would say that. First of all, Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, these are three, I mean, you could Lonzo's a one, two, Maybe, I mean, he could, uh, probably. You know what? No, Lonzo is a. He could. He could handle the ball well. He's a one and a two. You could put Zach Levine a two or three. Demar Derozan two or the three as well. These are players who are hungry. I would say Zach Levine is in that range where he's not exactly a young player, but he's still you know young. Demar Derozan, a little older than them, still performs at a high level. Still a great player in this league. Then you got uh, Vuc- Vucevic. As a big man, the problem I see obviously is defense. But pick up another big man, maybe get another someone who's gonna step up. That team's a great team. Maybe not a finals team, but they are knocking on the door of playoff contention and could possibly see chances of taking a team to seven games. In my opinion, although players don't exactly have a lot of experience in the playoffs, they are good enough young players. They, I, I'm sure that. When the season starts, we'll see them playing well together because they're young. Obviously, shooting the three is probably a, a challenge. Lonzo is getting better at shooting the three. DeMar DeRozan is a known mid-range sniper. I see no issue. This team could be doing well next season. Definitely better than they have been in the past, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, hold on. The next team I want to talk about is a very interesting team. The next team I want to talk about is the Philadelphia 76ers, okay? Sixers fans, if you're watching this, grab some Cheez-Its, grab some popcorn, sit down, because I want to just tell you this straight up to your face. Okay? Now, this goes to Daryl Morey. Okay? you If you have a chance to get Ben Simmons out of Philly for an elite guard as Damian Lillard, do that trade in a heartbeat and do not question it. Okay? Do not question it. You bring Damian Lillard into the 76ers organization... With Embiid, Drummond, uh, Tobias Harris, young players like Tyrese Maxey, and uh, what's his name, Matisse Thybul, that is a Eastern Conference final contending team, possibly a finals contending team, and there's no debate on that. You have arguably, Joel Embiid arguably is a top five player in this league, Damian Lillard is a top three guard in this league. You pair those two guys up, magic is going to happen better than what was going on with Simmons and Embiid because the lanes were clogged. You couldn't, uh, if, if there was no lane to be had, Simmons was passing that ball up. He's not taking to the rack. With Dame, he creates his own shot. It's a no-brainer, in my opinion, for Daryl Morey to do that. Portland may have something to say about that, but if you have the opportunity to trade Ben Simmons for Damian Lillard, there is no question that you do that trade instantly. Instantly, because why would you not? Why would you not want to have one of the best uh, scorers in the league, Damian Lillard, on a team with one of the, with one of, if not the best big man in the league, Joel Embiid. And I've had, I've had my discretions uh, with the Sixers and the stuff like that, but I have to respect, I have to give respect where it's due. Joel Embiid is a top two, top three, maybe even number one center in this league. You pair him up with a top three guard in Damian Lillard, sparks will fly. Sparks will fly and things are going to happen for that team. Um, you bring Drummond in, Drummond not a good free throw shooter like Ben Simmons, but another guy who can grab rebounds, 
box out, block shots, defend the paint. Tobias Harris is nothing to, to snuff at either. Um, a player that can get you 20 points a game. You got Tyrese Maxey, great on the ball, great on ball defender, as well as Matisse Thybul. You bring in Damian Lillard in that situation, there's no question that things would be great in Philly if that was the case. Okay? Um, and for, for Ben Simmons, the ship has sailed uh, with him going to with him going to the Warriors, in my opinion. The ship has sailed. I really hoped that he would, that something would, would come up and he would be able to go to the Warriors because that would be the best situation for him. Getting him to play with Clay and Curry, that would probably be the best situation for him. But that ship has since sailed, in my opinion, because um, they have Iguodala and they have Andrew Wiggins. And I don't think the... I don't think it's really... I mean, the Sixers would not probably want to trade Simmons for a player on that team unless it was a top scorer on that team, and I don't think that the Warriors are willing to give anyone up like that, except for maybe some picks and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I think the ship has sailed with Ben Simmons. Obviously, you've seen the news where not contacting teammates, not contacting the GM, the organization, it's possible that... Uh, in the next coming days, we see a trade happening, and I'm I'm at, I'm not even a Sixers fan. But if I was, I would be praying. I would be writing emails, sending letters, DMing Daryl Morey, and telling him, "Go get Damian Lillard." C.J. McCollum is not enough. He's not enough. I like him, but he's not enough. You have to go and get the big fish because if you want to market Ben Simmons as, "Oh, we want all this," blah 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 blah. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't ask for too much. Just get Damian Lillard. Because if that offer is on the table at all and you pass it up, you deserve to be put on the William Penn statue in City Hall. And you get you you deserve to get like uh tomatoes thrown at you, okay, Daryl Mori? I want like if you don't get Damian Lillard and that offer is on the table. You deserve to be hung by your underwear on the William Penn statue in City Hall, and you deserve to get tomatoes thrown at you all day long. You hear me? Like, God damn. It's not that difficult. As a Sixers fan, it's a no-brainer deal. For the Trailblazers, might be difficult. Might be a situation where, oh, you might want to might want to think about it. But for Sixers, no-brainer. No-brainer, in my opinion. Now, let me take a look at one thing real quick. And yeah, it's just... For me, as an NBA fan... Uh, it's pretty much a no-brainer at this point. It's not really a matter of, uh, you know, what the trade will be. It's just a matter of when. When will they make the deal with Ben Simmons? When will they ship him away? All right. Next team I want to talk about, Miami Heat. Okay. Now, being a fan of the Celtics in the Eastern Conference, the Eastern Conference is absolutely stacked. Now, I don't just mean that saying that there are teams that are super teams I'm saying that there are teams that could compete there are teams multiple teams that we could be watching in late June for the Eastern Conference final I think those teams are the Nets the Heat the Bucks again trade trade depending um, Ben Simmons depending whoever they get the Sixers are in that position the Celtics obviously in my opinion and who am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anybody? I don't really think so. I think those five teams, the Nets, the Heat, the Bucks, the Celtics, and the Sixers, barring a trade with Ben Simmons and Dam Damian Lillard, those are the main teams that are competing for the Eastern Conference Final. Now, obviously, you guys heard the news. The Heat have acquired Kyle Lowry. Now, let me just tell you something. My friend Trevor, uh, I think he, he might be watching this video. But if, if not, uh, I'll have to text him about this. But uh, he's a Raptors fan. I know he's a big fan of Kyle Lowry. But the good thing about Kyle Lowry leaving the Raptors is that he will be able to watch Kyle Lowry play deep into the playoffs, hopefully. Playing with Jimmy Butler, playing with Bam Adebayo. Honestly, that is an underrated big three in the East. Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, Bam. That is an underrated big three. Kyle Lowry, great shooter, great scorer. Underrated defensive player, in my opinion. Pair him up with Jimmy Butler, a hard-nosed, hard-ass player. 
Bam Adebayo, a demon on the rebounds. I mean, we've uh, as a Celtics fan, I saw it firsthand how how powerful and how um, how tenacious the Heat can be when they beat my Boston Celtics. Obviously, in the bubble, say what you will about that, you know, Mickey Mouse type shit bullshit. The Heat were a very good team. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Hero has um, fallen off a little bit, I guess, after Jack Harlow put him in the song, but he's st- you know he's still a pretty good player. Also got Duncan Robinson, who in my opinion is one of the one of the few players in this league that I absolutely hate and have complete disdain for because he is a lights out shooter and he well, he he broke my heart. He broke my heart many times. The the shots I thought he was gonna miss, they went right in. They were cash. Duncan Robinson is a fucking great shoot, great shooter, great shooter. Um, and yeah, now you get PJ Tucker on that team. Very good team. Very underrated. You're watching, you know, I'm watching the Olympics. I'm watching the Olympic basketball. I'm seeing Luka Doncic carry Slovenia. If I'm a Mavericks fan, or if I'm Luka Doncic for that matter, I am pissed that Mark Cuban and the Mavericks are not doing enough to get Luka any help. And, I mean, it's very obvious. It's very obvious that Luka is the future of this league. He could possibly be the best player in the NBA in the next five years. He already is a top 15 player, maybe. I mean, maybe even less than that, right? It's just it's just so obvious that when Luka is able to become a free agent, he is leaving that team. If they don't get him help, because Chris Stapps clearly was not help, um, who else do they have in that team? I mean, they got, they got young players, and it's just... Luka is too good to go to waste. For the Mavericks not to go after any free agents this offseason it's almost like disrespect to Luka Doncic because you you pair him up with a big man you pair him up with maybe a guard another ball handler the Mavericks are a team that has that has actual chances of making it to the Western Conference final the only reason why they're losing in the playoffs is because Luka has to score at least 40 points a game to do any to to win there's no one else that can uh help him with the burden if I was a Mavericks fan, I would be pissed. If I if I'm Luca, I'm pissed, because it's so clear that if Luca gets someone else for help, they are in a great position to win, or at least make it to the Western Conference Final. At least make it past the Clippers. At least get past some teams that they know they can beat if they had a little bit of help. But that seems unlikely. So very early prediction for me is that. If Luka does not get help in the next few years, he is leaving Dallas because why would you stay with a team that does not want to get you any help? I I guess the money, you could stay for the money, but if you want to win a title, go to a team that can actually get you help and actually can help you win and help showcase your talent. When you're playing in Dallas with a bunch of C-plus and B-average players, it's almost impossible to get past the first round of the playoffs by just scoring 40 points and having 11 assists and however many rebounds. So that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, that's about it. Um, oh, NFL. So with the NFL coming up, the season coming up, I want to talk about a few things um, for my Patriots, okay? First thing being, um, I know we got Mac Jones and Cam Newton and uh, I have caught a little bit. Of, I, caught, I have caught some glimpses of them in training camp. Have have caught some glimpses of some YouTube videos of players running around catching passes. Some friends have been to some uh, some training camp. I've seen some pictures, seen some videos. Let me just tell you something. The Patriots will definitely do better than they did last year, but don't expect a lot. I'm not. I, I'm a Patriots fan. I am not expecting a whole lot from them. Not even because, oh, Cam Newton, blah, blah, blah. No, I think he's going to do well. It's just, I'm hesitant to be so excited for this team when I don't even know. It's not like the past where I knew that Tom Brady would get through every team in the AFC East. The Bills, we might not get a game from them all year. The Dolphins are a strong team. That's going to be tough. 
the Jets, okay, we'll, we'll beat the Jets two, twice this season. No, no doubt about that. But, but let's not get ahead of ourselves in training camp or preseason. Let's wait a few more weeks before we decide whether or not this team is legit. I'm tired of people on the radio, 95, uh, 9, 98.5 Sports Hub. I'm tired of WEI, um, you know, condemning players or, you know, saying that they're the best player I've seen since Jesus Christ, right? I'm tired of that. Let's wait until at least Thanksgiving to determine how good this team is. Right? Is that fair? Let's, let's, let's wait till we see Mac Jones on the field. Let's wait till we see Cam Newton and friends on the field before we condemn, before that we start saying they're the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because in all fairness to the Patriots, in all fairness to Boston media, last year they they and me included were hyping up Cam Newton so much to the point where my dreams were shattered. My dreams were shattered. I was sad and depressed when I saw Cam Newton not being up to complete passes 25 yards or greater. So I'm going to end this here and just say, let's pump the brakes a little bit on the Patriots. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's not get too down on ourselves. It's August. It's early. It's the first week of August. Give us some time. Give it. Give the player some time to mesh. I'll see you guys in thanks on Thanksgiving for my official review of the Patriots. If the first few weeks of the season look immaculate, obviously I'll be out of my chair with excitement, clapping and stuff. And if there, if if it turns out that the first few weeks of the season the Patriots are absolutely dog shit, I will be on my podcast condemning them and saying they suck. But I'm gonna wait to give my uh, full opinions on them when the season actually starts. I'm not gonna get into this fantasy land type bullshit and start saying, oh well, maybe if this happens, maybe if this player does well, I'll do this. no, no. Let's pump the brakes. Wait to see how the season goes, how it progresses, and then we'll make my de- I'll make my decision then. But thanks for listening to this podcast, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it wasn't too long. I don't even know how long I've been talking for, but hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys have had a great summer. Um, summer's coming to an end. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys have had. Hope you guys have had a great summer. And thanks for tuning into the Fan of the People podcast. This is Cam Murray. And yeah, thanks again. And peace.